Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be working on Nsky's Paper Theater and this one's going to be Totoro. And the model number for this one is PT101. And the English title is going to be Going to Pick Up May. So let's open up the package. I'm using a Zacto knife to kind of get rid of the tape. And then once we open, it's usually the same for the paper theater. We're going to have a package full of all the papers and then a graphical instructional uh, manual, as you can see as I'm opening here. And it, this one actually has English instructions, although I've said in previous videos, you don't actually need it because you're going to see all the graphics for each step. And it actually does a good job of layer, showing each layer separate and then each uh, layer for each layer uh, one by one. So you're going to see like step one, step two, step three for the additional layers you're going to be adding on top of each other. So for each layer that I'm working off, and there's a total of six, I actually like pre-cutting out the pieces. And it's actually very simple because um, you just use an X-Acto knife and just disconnect the parts that are connected to the sheet. And there's a small tab that you're just kind of cutting across. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm using Mod Posh with a paintbrush to be gluing on to the back side. I've tried other glues and sometimes tacky glue works really good too. It's just that I actually just like using Mod Posh just because of how how thin the glue is that is actually really easy to just brush on a layer of glue. I know I don't really get a lot of views for these paper theater models but I actually enjoyed making them and they're pretty quick. They're usually about a two hour build sometimes one and a half hours and I, I just like making these videos just because I believe that you know some people will actually just like following videos um, instead of just reading the instructionals because the instructionals sometimes can be confusing just because um, it just shows kind of numbers with layers and sometimes I do have to kind of think about it real quick about what they're asking me to do um, and you know just seeing like a video of someone putting it together sometimes helps and especially when you have sometimes a front layer and then a back layer and so in this case you know um, right now I'm doing the front layer and so hopefully this can serve as a guide for certain people who actually like working on these uh, paper theaters and if you want to try creating your uh, paper theater model um, you know you can always go on to websites such as like Amazon or eBay or you know there are other vendors out there um, and you just look up nsky which is e-n-s-k-y and then paper theater and they have a bunch of different models um, they have you know a lot of the Studio Ghibli uh, series but they actually do have a lot of Disney series and some anime series like uh, My Hero Academia, uh, Dragon Ball, Naruto, um, you know, so they do have a variety and actually they do have a few that are peanuts So, you know, Charlie Brown and Snoopy. So they do have a few more American animation series also And they do have quite a bit of Disney ones although like each Disney movie there might be just one So there's like one Cinderella, uh, one Tangled model. I believe there's two Frozen models You know, so it's actually they have quite a bit of a selection and you know you might have to look for various vendors just to look for one of the videos or oh, sorry not the videos but one of the models i mentioned before one of my previous videos for the paper theater models but the cat buzz always reminds me of like the cheshire cat from alice in wonderland and i'm specifically uh talking about the uh graphics in the Lewis Carroll novel, uh, maybe not so much the Cheshire Cat from the animation movie from Disney because uh, he seems more like a, uh, a cat that's just kind of a silly, you know, kind of, you know, round. But there is a specific like graphic from the original illustrations of the Lewis Carroll novel and it always just, you know, reminds me of that character. I love Studio Ghibli and I believe that they're probably one of the best like hand-drawn animators now or animation studios. Um, you know, they have such great classics like Spirit Away, Totoro, Kiki's Magic Delivery Service, uh, you know, Poco Rosso. Like there's just so many like classics. And I'm a big fan of Hayao Miyazaki, you know, um, not just from Studio Ghibli, but you know, there's so many other movies too, like Grave of the Fireflies is still such a great film. Um, it's such a tearjerker. Um, you know, and I was really sad when I first initially heard that he was going to be retiring and the last uh, movie that he was going to be directing was going to be The Wind Rises, which came out in 2013. And then um, I believe afterwards he kind of came out of retirement um, to work on a few additional movies. And 
some of the movies afterwards you're actually doing it as a computer generated animation and this isn't a 3d uh cgi as much as it's using 3d but making it look like it's a hand-drawn animation and it's just you know like a 2d style and I believe in an interview, uh, Miyazaki actually said, especially with the computer generated uh, animation now, and he finally kind of got into it and he kind of saw like the benefits of it and how much of a time server it can be, that he said that if this is, you know, kind of like how the industry is, that he can kind of see himself continuing on making films, you know, which was great. Although you kind of lose that hand-drawn quality a little bit, um, but actually, Recently, I believe in May, there was an article that I'm actually looking at right now that is stating that they're, uh, are, they're working on a new film. Um, it's going to be called How Do You Live? And it's going to be a fully hand-drawn animation again, which I think is great because I thought that that was not the direction that they're going to be going anymore and that Studio Ghibli would be doing you know, uh, computer-generated animation. But it's great to hear that they're going to be doing uh, hand-drawn animations again. And you know, they're actually saying that it takes about a month per minute of animation, which is kind of insane if you think about like even just like a 90 minute uh, you know video. That means that's going to be about 90 months, which is just insane. So I don't know how they're going to be doing a feature film. Um, it will take you know a long time to finish, but I think they're saying that they're gonna have about three more years left so this will be really interesting to see because they're saying that it's going to be a total of six years in development so I'm guessing it's going to be a kind of a 60 minute animation so you know we're going to be looking forward to more news about that later. So as you can see here the other four layers have been completed and I'm actually uh, working on the second layer now and this just had to do with when I was working on it I was working on it per the manual instructions kind of like going in order but in reality this was the second layer so I decided to put it in the front of the video so that the layers are done in a sequential order um, this is just to uh, remove some confusion about layering because I did do an early paper model uh, build where I accidentally built it in the wrong order and then when I laid it up on top of each other you know they were not incorrect because I just kind of stacked them up and then just kind of put the tabs on and I realized after all the glue dried that the back two layers were reversed actually the back three layers were reversed and the, the very back uh, background actually hid the last one layer and which kind of threw off the whole thing because you know there's this whole detail of one of the bass house uh, buildings that you just totally lose and you know it, it took a while to you know register so I'm just doing this so that if you're building along with this video and you're using it as a reference I want to make sure that you understood the sequence of the layers uh, maybe not as what the instructions will say but as much as what you should be doing and how you should be layering them up for when you're actually going to put them together. So usually by this point in the video I would actually be done with about the fourth layer but as you can see the first two layers just have so much detail especially the first layer had so many layers and so many parts um, that the video is a little bit longer. Uh, the typical video would run about 11 minutes unless it's one of the large format ones then it will take about 13 to 14 minutes and in this case this uh, normal size build took about 14 minutes of video time. Um, the build itself took about closer to two to three hours um, instead of the normal one and a half to two hours and it just had to do with the complexity of the model by having so many layers. The difficulty level itself is not hard and I believe that this is a three out of five stars that they recommend for uh, difficulty but uh, just cause of the pure number of parts I feel like this is more of a four out of five because there are a lot of uh, alignment th that you need to make sure that you do correctly for the small parts especially uh, because you're gonna be layering on about four layer to maybe five layers on top of each other. There's really not a lot of tips for doing these paper theater models because they're pretty straightforward you know just if I have to give a few tips one of them would be you know a make sure you have very very uh, sharp 
edge so you know like a uh, exacto knife you know make sure that you replace other blades often because if you do a lot of builds with exacto knives the dull will either chip or it will actually get dull and the last thing you want to do with paper is use a dull knife because what happens is that you're going to start getting uh rips in the paper or what you'll actually end up having is um kind of like a white edge just because it's a dull edge your edges will actually get creased and it looks very messy and dirty so you know always use a sharp exacto knife uh, number two would be you know use a paintbrush with a thin glue like mod podge i wouldn't really use rubber cement just because i've had bad luck with rubber cement where like a month or two later it starts peeling off because it is a pretty weak bond i know um, some people use it for photo montages and stuff and bonds very very well but my history with rubber cement just you know has not been that strong of an adhesive um, and then I guess, you know, C, the third, you know, tip really would be always have a toothpick by your side. I have like a toothpick holder with like a hundred toothpicks in it because I use that sharp toothpick edge to get in between the creases or like the gaps and clean up the glue because if you have the glue and you don't clean it up, the, the edges actually look messy. And so you want to be able to... Um, you know clean it up so you get sharp lines you get sharp deep shadows um and it look it makes it look like a very clean model um you know and i think one more uh tip that i would add on to it is actually going to be um something that uh may vary between uh the type of glue that you're using you know um if you do decide to use like rubber cement rubber cement the one good positive is that if you have rubber cement and it dries and it kind of leaves a glue mark it's really easy to clean with an eraser because when you're erasing the paper edge the uh, rubber cement will actually peel off very easily um, so you know you can actually get very clean finish afterwards um, it kind of works a little bit with Mod Podge, but not as great. So sometimes I'll use an exacto knife to scrape off with excess glue, but I don't try to scrape it off too much because then it will actually kind of give a worn out look on the paper and it will have a kind of a different texture and a color to it. Um, you know, so um, use, you know, a, an eraser to kind of help clean up your glue marks. You know, this wouldn't really work with tacky glue or you know like a super glue um, so you know just be careful with the glue that you're using so here are all the six layers and as you can see three of the layers are of the cat bus and so there are a lot of details and it takes up half of the, uh, the build and then there's totoro on the fifth layer kind of waving back at you and you know um it's it's a great build and i love the color schemes on this one and you know um now we're gonna be assembling it together and you're gonna have tabs and there's gonna be three different sizes for the tabs a large a medium and a small and so the large and the uh, medium sizes are actually going to be uh, six tabs wide while the small one is only gonna be five tabs wide and what you're doing is for the bottom two corners you're going to be using the large piece and then the top two corners are going to be the medium piece and then the side pieces are all going to be the smalls and i actually use paintbrush here but i changed this method later on uh, for different builds where i actually end up using a tacky glue inside of a squeeze bottle and gluing on the tack or the tab itself because it actually makes it a cleaner and quicker build um, you know but you know here we go you know we're putting the last tabs in and here is the reveal and again, this is the PT-101 Totoro for Paper Theater from NSKY. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed watching it, please subscribe or watch some other videos that are on my channel. And thank you very much.